Hi everyone, and uh, <coughs> just had a mad, <laughs> a mad rush there, switching everything off <coughs> and switching it back on again. Um, not too sure what I did, why I did it, or etc. Um, etc. Et but uh, these things happen. Um, what I'm going to do on the second half is um, there's still quite a lot to do but you know at the end of the day I can do another one or I could even do a, um, a separate evening with specific Photoshop or uh, Luminar or elements etc and not have so many things open all at once to show you um, about doing something so what I'm gonna do is when everybody's back is just to um, move on a little bit to the other things that uh, I've got to show you this evening and <clears throat> one or two things that might be a little bit more helpful to um, to show you uh, one or two things the first one and as I say I will just wait another minute before we get going um, the next one that I'm going to show you <coughs> and I'm going to show you in Photoshop um, because it's one that quite a lot of members have got either in the CC version or the um, the um, elements version is how to straighten an image up so um, it is it is something that people struggle with and as you all know judges do say it would have been better had you um, had you straightened it up or or whatever so we'll just I'm just getting this image ready so that we can show you um, what I'm doing and how um, so it just resizing this screen because when I open something it opens up on the left hand side so um, <coughs> I have to drag it across so we've got roughly about the same amount back again we've um, we've lost one or two um, all I could say is apologies for um, actually losing contact there um, I'm just better than the machinery is so you know it does it does just uh, throw a wobbly not very often I must admit it only seems to throw a, a wobbly when I'm going live on here so um, don't know why anyway right welcome back everybody um, we've got 18 looking at the moment so I'm going to start with this image. This is in Photoshop. And of course, um, with it being Photoshop CC, it's uh, paid for and it um, updates itself automatically, etc, etc. Um, so this is the very latest version. So I have my system set so that every image I open opens in camera raw this is camera raw that you're looking at here and uh, you can do that in your preferences and it opens up in camera raw which gives you a lot more features than what you just get in the standard program if you don't open it in camera raw so straighten this image as you can see it's been taken um, in this was uh, Boston if I remember rightly and um, we've got these converging verticals at the sides of these um, 
uh, seating, this seating and this woodwork. Nowadays, very, very simple. We've got lots of things across the top and lots of things up down the side and another bunch up here. So initially, the first thing I always do is straighten the image. So I pick up the, um, the straightener, the spirit level, the one up the top there. And I go on to something that I know is level in the background, click, left click, drag it across, let go, and that's the image straightened up. So when I double click in the side of this, it just jumped there and it's now dead square with the level of the the church in the you know the, the background there. So the sides, all we do, we come up to the tools at the top here again. And there's this one here that's called the transform tool. Now if we click the transform tool it makes this side jump to a different, when I say this side, this side on the right makes it jump into this, um, all of these different ways that you can change things accordingly. Up, down, left, right, etc, etc. Now if you want to be very precise you have a little button at the bottom here that you can tick and if you tick that you put a grid on. Now sometimes the grid works really well for big buildings but when you're looking at the finer detail to start with I use my eye. So if we can look at the um, sliders and what they do for you the back one is a vertical so if you had a building that was leaning backwards or forwards then if you drag this it just stands the building up again so now I'm putting that back wall a little bit squarer as you saw it instantly jumped to fill in all of the space around now had I wanted the top of this building there to be in the center there to be uh, if it had been hidden up the top, on here your X and your Y axis change how much of the picture is at the top and the bottom. So if I wanted to move this, as you can see it brings it down until it shows you the background. So if you wanted a little bit more of the top, you could have it up there. Now if you wanted a bit more of this table down here at the bottom, if we use offset Y, we can drag it the other way until we just get that table in just there. So you can move it up and down and I set my verticals. Now with these um, horizontals on the sides etc, we've got to get them all right. Now what you could do is just as simple as these presets up here if we just click it, give it a second, pop, it's gone. And now you can see up this side it is straight. If you, and I'm going to take that off so that I can show you, if you wanted to um, do it individually, as I say you can do your vertical first, you can then play with the horizontals until you get it back to if you play in just press the O and put it back to naught. The aspect we can squash it, we can extend it in and out. Let me just put a naught back in there. And we can scale it in and out to get in a bit like cropping. So we can do all of those things there. If we want to do both level from side to side and square, if we hit the square at the end here, this one here at the end, that does everything all in one pop. So you're now square and it's brought the back wall up. So you've got a nice image there to go on with. If we go off the transform tool and go on to the hand tool or the zoom tool it brings up 
the tools again on this side. So if we felt that it was a little bit bright, etc., we could take the exposure down, the highlights down, we could just play with the sliders accordingly. Or one thing I always tell people to do is click the auto, see what it does, see if you're happy with that, and if it's made it a bit bright or whatever, then just play around with the sliders accordingly. If you want to take it off again and do it yourself, just go to default again and it will take it back to default. And then once you've played with it, open the image and you've got the image in the um, on the screen. Now I have floating images, so I can drag that out and play with it as a separate floating image. So you can dock it again if you want, um, but if you're playing with two or three images or a lot of images, then floating or docking and undocking images is really good. So let me just look at the next thing that I'm doing to see if I can do it in there. Producer canvas, I did that. Producer canvas, place, I'm not doing that. Um, right, whilst we're here, we're going to resize the image. So this is for two or three of the members that have asked. And it's getting these images right for sending in for competition people find it a little, a little bit difficult to grasp the technique to get it spot on. So we've got an image here now that we've manipulated it down in this bottom left hand corner, this bottom left hand corner here, the image size is 46.4 megabytes. Now what some people think is that they need to resize that down to 2 megabyte because that's what Jill wants it at but that's not the story because that size is when the image is open so now that it's open the full size of it is 46.4 when I close the image it'll be a compressed size file a compressed JPEG so consequently what we need to do is we need to start by looking at the image. Now what you've got to remember is that when you save this image you've got to do one of two things. You've got to work on a copy or when you save it you must save the copy as something totally different to the original. Otherwise you will totally destroy your original and you'll never get it back up to size with the same clarity. So do be careful about that. So, um, right, so if we go up to uh, image, image size, as you can see here, firstly, it opens up a box which gives you the sizes and dimensions of the image. So here's your 46.4, that's the original size width, height, resolution, I've got my camera set to 300 resolution because that's what I want to print. If anybody wants me to print, try and make sure your images are at 300 resolution. So these boxes at this side, you can change them. So consequently, we want them changing to pixels for a start because Jill wants it no longer than if I remember rightly, 3,500 3,500 pixels. Oh! 3,500 pixels on the longest side. And Graham's going to have a, a massive coronary in a minute. Come on. what's up with you let me just close a couple of programs down just to see if it's uh, causing problems the stream you will get a green screen in a minute because um, it's just having a little wobbly 
let's just close this one down as well see if um, let's just see if I can close anything else down frustrated isn't quite the word at the moment it um, it's definitely more than frustrating um, um, it is totally gone again let me just switch this screen off I don't think it's got anything to do with the screen let's just take that out one or two bits uh, just looking at some notices that uh, it's just saying that you'll experience a bit of buffering but uh, I'm experiencing more than buffering in here so um, I'm not too sure at this moment in time I'm gonna have to no no it's not that Dane it's um it's the computer that's just having a wobbly it um, it's just not playing ball at all at the moment oh let's switch the last one off do you really want to quit yes go away skip it's actually looking like it's Photoshop that's um, doing the crashing bit yeah Viv, uh, Dane was asking me let me just control alt delete out of it everything will go off for a minute if this will work right that's brought it back now let me just switch on Photoshop on its own I should be back with you in a second folks you can't quite appreciate um, you can't appreciate the um, I can't even think of the word at the moment but uh, And it also takes a life to open um, if you open Photoshop up again it takes forever to open here we go we, we get in there it's um, it's coming here we go we're we're back so let me just drag the picture across and I'll just get on with it while you um, whilst you catch up it's always different working with two screens of course as well so let me just it's remembered that so open image right so I'm back with you now we're resizing image 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 size we see image size here we go down to where I said a minute ago image inches we change it to pixels you highlight the pixels and because it's locked you only need to change one of these so I shall change it to 3000 
500 which is the longest side it will automatically change the height here so that will make the image much smaller so now rather than 46 megabytes we're down to 23.4 so we've now got the size corrected now you've got to say are we enlarging it or are we making it smaller so at the moment at the moment we're making it smaller so as you can see it looks like it's Photoshop that's um, causing the problems tonight folks it's um, I've got nothing else running and it's just playing up like something wicked and it won't it just freezes now so <sighs> let me change over to elements and show you in elements it um, put my cursor at the bottom of the screen just about red line and got thumbnail of picture <laughs> yeah right I'm going to open elements just to see if that will do it a little bit better I've definitely got a problem with the resources now sometimes um, uh, you do get problems with Photoshop and it uh, it's just for one particular reason playing up tonight so let's just give it another go in elements I just want to try and get this um, sizing right for everybody so right this is opened up I can't do the adjustments in here but it's remembered the adjustments from from last time because in elements you have less options that you can use and less options across here as well so I'll just open this image into here and it'll open up in a minute or so when it gets round to it yeah the um, the resources in Photoshop Dane are at the level that I've used them for at literally years and years and years so theoretically it shouldn't be a massive problem with um, Photoshop it's not dragging anything out of the computer neither because I can see the computer working and um, it, I say working it's not working very hard because it's not bringing this picture up at the moment so um, come on where the hell are you gone let me just try dragging it in again and see if it'll work for some reason it's not um, open image put it in here grids on on this one but don't worry about it um, we'll switch that off in view switch the grid off so we've got that we go up to image we go to uh, resize and we go to image size in here and we drag it across and we've got very very similar box we change the inches to the I've forgotten what it is in this one it's uh, why isn't it in pic oh it's pixels up here you're getting all confused now so 3500 that brings it down to that 23.4 by cubic best for smooth gradients once beyond so we make it to a smaller size and then this is the bit that people now get a bit confused about if you go to file save as and it brings up all the images where this image came from and now when you save it some people just say save 
and don't look at the next bit so I'm just going to say Boston um, some people don't say anything other than save now it saves it sometimes in the wrong format because I opened a JPEG and I've worked on a JPEG it's not changed format but you can look at all of these different formats you can make it a PNG a TIFF um, I always save mine in JPEG so in JPEG now if you wanted you could save it as a copy so you could save it as a copy but with the same name and it would say the number and then copy but what I'm going to do I've changed the name up here so the names change here uh, I'm going to say save and it brings up another box which now says the size and the quality of the image that you're saving now in this box whether it's Photoshop CC or whether it's elements if you untick this box it doesn't tell you the size of the image here if you click that preview it tells you the size of the image and that's the same on Photoshop CC or elements so now for competition purposes you want this down to 2 megabytes so just drag this back a little bit have a look still 2 3 drag it back to 8 now it's 1 8 spot on save the file now if we go to where the file is which is in here and we should have a picture of Boston now if we hover over that now as you can see it's 1.8 megabytes so that's the procedure for resizing images now in Luminar you can resize the image if you want when you've finished with it if you've been working in it in Luminar but it doesn't give you that size so what you have to do is to save it once and then come back to here where you've saved it check the size and if it's not quite right go back into here go back to save and then just decrease the size a little bit and start afresh so if you haven't got it right the first time when it says save it'll say you already have a file with this name just overwrite it and it'll put your correct size on top of the other one and just replace it so that's the best way to resize um, just as a matter of interest um, <laughs> I, like, I like what Car Caroline said um, she's apologizing to Jill for being uh, for getting it wrong so that's the way to do it that's the way to do it and um, so hope that's answered the question you will of course be able to look back at this or if you're still totally confused just get in touch with me and I'll run through it again as a one-to-one -one with you and um, you can get it right so that um, it saves Jill a lot of work because if you imagine she gets probably 60 to I don't know 80 images 90 images in in a competition and she has to check every one you know it does take a quite a while to to do that so you know do be careful um, right what I'm gonna do now is just check the time 1236 what I'm gonna do I do have when I look here um, I've got the how to straighten buildings in Photoshop and elements I'd also got getting images ready for printing now I'm going to do that another time for you so so that whatever printer you've got um, you'll be able to look into your settings and print a print good enough to putting into a competition um, with your own printer even if it's an A4 printer uh, of a cheaper model it doesn't matter so it's all about getting things right the next one manipulation software now manipulation software 
I would just like to say that every one of you is given with your camera a free program so here's a list of the names now Canon is DPP professional that's digital photo professional and um, that's the Canon one Olympus is Olympus workspace there is also an Olympus tether as well Panasonic is um, photo fun studio and it's also got a tether it's also got a tether system as well called Lumix tether Sony is play memories Nikon is Nikon capture Fuji is capture one Express which is free but there is also a capture one which you can purchase that does more for you the same with Sigma Sigma has got capture pro but you can buy Sig Sigma photo pro but you have to purchase that one and it gives you a bit more as well so whatever camera you've got look up the free software program for your camera you can download it for free all you then need is the serial number from the bottom of your camera and off you go you've got a free program that virtually does absolutely everything for you so um, those are the free programs um, what I'm going to do now is this Bob's special monthly competition the landscapes and seascapes um, so what I'm going to do is show you the entries read Bob's comments out and show you the um, end winners etc so let me just go back there because I want these comments opening first which will just open on the other screen which it has done so images right off we go so the first one once this program's opened it'll be okay so the first program and at this moment in time I'm not too sure of the authors I think we can all see that one's Michael's so um, a day to remember I like the letterbox crop some of the characters are a little dark a nice image of the day at the seaside and one to remember the next one a day whale watching so Bob said what a great sight nicely timed and captured and so close to the shore it must have been deep water black and white conversion does this image justice the next one is abandoned on the rocks perhaps if this was cropped to draw your attention to the detail of the abandoned boat and rocks a nice find and a good reminder of a walk along the shoreline alien landscape certainly alien the image does give you the atmosphere of the location and the crop does the image justice very nice amble by the sea Northumberland I am supposed to be here on holiday in a couple of weeks time but this is the nearest I'm going to get a nice cloud formation perhaps the sky too blue but the author had a great day on the coast a nice image an evening in Valencia Harbour nicely composed with the figures in the foreground it is difficult but the Sun is burnt out perhaps it could have been darkened or if you had time to wait for the Sun to have gone down even further it may have helped a nice image from your visit to Valencia the next one is beach walk a nice clear beach and someone walking it looks as though it could have been a windy day the image is a little moody has atmosphere and a minimalistic look I like this one bluebells at uh, bluebell woods a lovely splash of spring color if you could have cropped out the half tree trunk on the right it would have made better viewing I feel the stump in the foreground certainly adds to the scene a very nice image bow fiddle a nice long exposure of this now familiar rock of the Scottish coast the rocks lead you in nicely to the main focus of the image perhaps more detail in the sky would have helped but a very nice image brown pelicans in flight beautiful location I am guessing that it has been well cropped as I can see noise in the sky 
More detail in the flying birds would have improved the image. It's easy for me to say, but if you could have got the birds head on, <laughs> head on, a lovely sight to have seen. I am a little jealous. Boy, if this one is in the East Coast, as I suspect, suspect someone has had a an early start. A lovely sunrise and a nice detail in the rippling sands with interest throughout the image. A lovely image. Changing weather. <coughs> Excuse me. For me, a little less sky and a bit more beach. The sky is carrying a lot of noise on the screen and spoils a lovely atmospheric black and white image. Nicely cropped in the letterbox style. Clee thoughts in the morning. You were lucky to see water every time. I, uh, uh, sorry, you were lucky to see water. Every time I go there, the sea is near Holland. Not sure about black and white conversion. The pier is a little dark. Perhaps if the author had lifted the shadows and blacks a little, it might have been more detail and also made the young person stand out a little better. Corgarth Castle. Love this one. I hope to see it one day. This one would be in my eyes uh, a candidate for black and white conversion. Easy for me to say as I was not there, but if you had gone down low to take it, sorry, just thinking, what do I know? A lovely winter's view. Crazy groins. Excuse me while I have a quick slurp. Crazy groins. I like the fact you caught oyster catches on this occasion. It's all right, I'm looking for them. Ah oh, yes, I see them, Bob. Um, I like the fact that you caught oyster catchers on this occasion. If you could have had the groin central to, to my eyes, they look to be leaning to the right. But a nice black and white image and this set of groins suit a portrait crop. Cullen, Scotland. At my first glance, the waves seem to be going away from the land. Not sure of the lie of the land there. You may have been looking from another harbour wall. Sorry, I was looking at the picture. Harbour wall. The lighthouse appears to be very small. Usually they are taller structures. A pleasing image with atmosphere. Quite like that one. Um, dr drama, but not on the beach. I like the simplicity of this image. One could argue that there is too much sky. Perhaps the boat could have broken the skyline. But that's been picky, a very nice image. Gate posts, what a lovely location for I my for my eyes, a little oversaturated, and I do not see the stones as gate posts. Also uh, sorry, also a sky of two halves, but that's just my opinion. I would love to come with you on your next visit to the gorgeous place, a nice find. I would love to go there and take the um take the Milky Way above it. Whichever way you go it looks like you haven't got a lot of trees close so you could get a good Milky Way above that. Right onwards. Golden hour. It certainly is the golden hour. It looks and reminds me of Australia. For my eyes perhaps if the colours are a little oversaturated and again a little noise in the sky. But a very nice image of a trip the author has made either early morning or late in the day. Inland Grand Canaria. What a lovely view. Perhaps it could have been dehazed a little. The one thing that spoils it for me is the spot in the sky which catches my eye. It could have easily have been cloned or spot removed. But a nice image and a lovely view from up in the mountains. Island view. Another location I am jealous of. Sorry. I'll start again. Another location I am jealous of. Perhaps if you could have stood a little to the right and got more of the hammock, which would have got rid of foliage top left corner. I am guessing a bad weather day, hence the black and white conversion. But a nice image of an island beach. Lee looking towards Hesham. He he I'm not sure if the same author as the earlier image of these groins. Time will tell. I prefer this one in colour. 
Perhaps the dark areas of the groins could have been lightened a little to give a bit more detail, but a good record of the day or a holiday down in Norfolk. March in Lincolnshire. A typical view to be seen in our part of the world. I like the tree being the main focal point and the way the branches are leaning with the prevailing wind nicely composed. Morning. Another nice location. It is always difficult with the light when one side is lit nicely and the other side is in shade. It might have been possible to have drawn more detail uh, from the trees on the right. The smoke slash stream from the industrial site draws your eyes through the image nicely. No passing landward. A nice black and white conversion it might have been improved if the author had included all of the lettering or stood a little to the left and had none. You were not blessed with a nice sky, a nice image of the lighthouse at low tide. Not a quiet, not quiet a rainbow. What a great view and unfortunately no bow <coughs> for the um, sun. Right, looks like a computer problem because I haven't even got um, what do you call it on at the moment right I shall find the image just stop that and I'm on not quite a rainbow and um, uh, not quite a rainbow right off we go again not quite a rainbow uh, areas in the image complement each other I guess you were in the right place at the right time and you have caught the moment in time nicely. Peaceful view. What a great place to be on your own and a camera. There is some great locations when you start looking around. Perhaps more land showing would have helped but a great sky and location showing a peaceful view. Poppy fields. What a wonderful display and the poppies adding more than a splash of colour to the countryside and rather poignant at the moment with the 75th anniversary only a couple of days ago. Well seen and spotted, a wonderful capture. Portland Bill Seascape Scene I always find it hard getting white water. On this occasion you have had the camera setting about right. My only concern are the two light lens flare stars. Yep, see them. Uh, that draw your eye from the main event of the wave crashing into the rocks. A nice coastal picture. Rather him than me. There's always one who does not know the dangers of the sea. I feel this image is a little overworked in one of the editing programs. But a nice black and white photo and I think well worth a rework. Reservoir Reflections. A nice view looking the length of the reservoir with the hills reflected and the sun bathed peaks at the far end. Perhaps a little tightly cropped on the right, a little more land would have helped, but a nice shot of a lovely location. Rotterdam. This photograph proves to me that you don't, do not have to be in an exotic location to get a good image. Pin sharp throughout with interest through all of the image and a very nice black and white conversion. Skegness groins. <coughs> I do not particularly like wind turbines but they certainly add interest and make the image of these groins at Skegness a very nice black and white photo. I like the fact that they are central and they help uh, this a nice long exposed image. South Stack Lighthouse. A nice image looking down on the lighthouse with its white buildings which can be hard to photograph on a bright day. A little too tightly cropped. If it was possible a landscape crop would enhance the image. Says he who was not there and knows nothing about the location. Spurn Point Old Wooden Groins. A very good and sharp image of the groins at Spurn. The image might have been improved if the foreground was a little darker or the texture enhanced but a very nice and pleasing black and white. Surf breaking over the reef. 
another location where I would <coughs> excuse me <coughs> um, start again another location where I would happily go as someone's bag carrier just a shame you could not have had a boat to create some interesting uh, interest and to give the image scale very nice image of the surf breaking surprise view of Derwent very nice view uh, guessing a high F stop as the odd spots on sky showing dust on sensor <coughs> I love the cloud formation I think it is natural looking at the reflections in the lake I could look at views like this all day a very nice surprise the glorious North York Moors a great view guessing not far from Gothman perhaps a little cropped at the bottom uh, to get rid of the road and this would enable you to show more of the moors it's making me feel homesick a lovely rural landscape the walk home yes a hard walk home up steep hill nice night shot and you have caught the light from the windows and cathedral nicely the couple are showing movement due to long exposure a nice nighttime image through the valley a great landscape photo in my eyes the road leads you through the image the hills rising on all sides just a lovely location it could be argued that the spoil heaps could be cropped out and you would still have a very nice record of this valley tides out the boy is certainly high and dry I feel the author could have shown more of the dry land and if possible the water's edge in the background to give the viewer more of an impression that the tide's out well spotted and some nice colour on the colourless beach trees well I cannot argue with the title but it does not look real to me um, the flock of birds flying like that near to the ground I can see this image on a wall in some office or hotel and I guess a lot of work's gone into it but sorry not my cup of tea Vale of York from Sutton Bank Top lovely view from up there looking across Yorkshire the willow herb in the foreground very nice perhaps the sky and in particular the fields oversaturated a nice part of the world to go with your camera volcano caldera by the sea I imagine that would be a great ride over the caldera which looks like a landscape from another planet a nice photo from high on the rim of the old volcano and a great record of your day at this location walking the dogs I like this minimal minimalist image and the letterbox crop I feel a bit more beach and less sky may help when viewing the, this image you are unfortunate not to have had a dramatic sky and the last one Wells next sea Norfolk waiting for the tide a lovely view of the yachts waiting for the next tide a very peaceful scene on what looks like a hot summer's day the masts fill a rather featureless sky nicely an easy on the eye image so Bob's just then written just a, a couple of lines as I have said before I'm not a judge as such and I may miss some of the technical points of judging but I know what I like so please do not take any of my comments too seriously it is just some of my observations and trying to get it all into three or four lines of text is not easy and I may miss some observations and comments out it certainly has filled my Sunday and in an enjoyable way as there were some smashing images to look through there were 34 colour entries and I have picked the uh, top 10 so to speak which I'll show you in a minute but as with the monthly it is hard just to pick a few as others are as good but 10 it is I hope you enjoyed getting entries ready as much as I enjoyed viewing them Jill will tell me whose image is was whose as the week goes on now the bad bit for me to pick 10 so if I just switch that off and switch that back top 10 your first one is Jim's Through the Valley. Two is Drama but not on the beach, Paul Walker. Three 
Walking the Dogs, Chris Peen, Corgarth Castle, which is mine, Not Quite a Rainbow, Dane Butler, Boy, Dave Lavash, March in Lincolnshire, Caroline Steele, Wells Next Sea, Norfolk Waiting for the Tide, Alan Crossland, Bow Fiddle is mine, The Glorious North York Moors, Graham Halliday. So I'll just put you the black and white up. Top six black and white because of course there was less black and whites than the others. I have split the black and white from the colour as I think it is unfair to compare colour and black and white as equals. There were 12 black and white entries so I shall pick a top six and these are uh, Bob's top six. Rotterdam by Dave Lavash. Spurn Point, Old Wooden Groins, Alan Crossland. No Passing Landward, Jill Guest. A Day Whale Watching, Mark Richardson. Rather Him Than Me, Graham Halliday. And The Walk Home, Michael Hughes. Final little word from Bob. I hope I've not upset you so much with my selection and please tell me where I've gone wrong. And if time permits, <clears throat> will the authors of every entry please send a copy in for the website. I must admit there's some super images in there so I agree with you totally Bob. Um, if as members you haven't got um, a section in the um, website then now's the time to do it. Get your um, the um, get yourself a uh, some folders put in. Get some images in, etc., etc. Um, so we are just up to coming up to nine o'clock. So I'm going to cut there. I'm just going to see what else we were going to do. We were going to do all about time lapse and how to produce it how to do it and how to work it out but we'll do a separate night on that one so very well done to those people with the images um, I can only apologize about the computer um, I'm gonna say I don't know whether Graham sat down or stood up but um, possibly a new computer would save the problem Graham you know I'll choose one tomorrow if you get in touch so um, you know uh, yeah very well done um, just let me know just before I finish speaking in the comments below but um, whether you've actually want to do the practical side of it again um, it is something that I've had to sort of pick out a few questions from the committee members um, because we didn't get any only one I think it was um, question from the members so you know it um, it is difficult trying to get the right things for you but uh, as I say if you could just let me know in the comments in the live chat there um, if you would like to do um, a night like this again and if you want a specific subject doing rather than flicking backwards and forwards to various subjects then you know I can do a specific um, on a topic that um, that you can follow but I do need you to send me in what you want otherwise we're only guesstimating um, what you actually want and I might not be getting it right and you might be sat there thinking right I'll go get a cup of tea while he yaks on about this so um, I can see the comments coming up there yes um, you're happy to do something like this again so um, 
what I'll do is um, if you I mean I know we're having a this virtual meeting every week but if I wasn't sat here doing this I'd be sat watching photography tutorials and things on the telly so I might as well try and help people where I can so um, so you know let me know what you want to know about and possibly I can do one on a different night uh, as well just specifically on this sort of topic just answering your questions um, Doreen's just put yes enjoy sometimes it's not knowing what it is you don't know until you are told I think I know what you mean right uh, thanks Jan um, the other thing that I would like to say those people who aren't the ones that have gone back to work on Tuesday next week so that's Tuesday next week which is the 19th so the 19th next Tuesday I'm doing a specific talk which I forgot what it's entitled um, about photography um, and some of my pictures for the Albany Club our twin club in Australia so I'm doing it at 12 o'clock because that is for them at 7 o'clock at night because they're in Albany they're seven hours on so if you're interested then have a look on the channel next Tuesday 12 noon and it'll be about an hour and a half so um, have a have a good time and we'll see you next Tuesday I'll send a reminder out about it and we shall see you all later take care we'll catch you again bye for now cheers <laughs>